Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to module 7 and uh, we have uh, presented Fermi's golden rule for uh, non-radiative transition and uh, we have seen that uh, yeah, the rate of transition, how quickly population can, trans can be transferred through this non-radiative transition depends on the coupling strength and the density of states if it is uh, state to continuum transition. Now after having understood this uh, non-radiative transition, uh, we will try to compare the theoretical findings with the possible experimental outcome. So, already we have understood that the total non-radiative transition probability from initial state n, let us say I have an initial state n to a group of closely spaced final states M, uh, M is representing the continuum due to weak perturbation is given by this Fermi's golden rule. So, this is the Fermi's golden rule we get for the transition probability. And uh, uh, here we remind that this is density of states for the final states density of states. and. Um, this uh, this term is the coupling term which is coupling between two states which is written as um, h dash m n square is nothing but m h dash n square. So, this integration is the coupling between two states which are uh, transferring the population and we also assume that this T1, this time is coming because we assume that um, the interaction was started at t equals 0 and it was turned off at t equals T1 time and that is why we are checking the total probability of transition or in other words total population in the final state at T1 time. Now, equation, this equation, this Fermi's golden rule for the uh, state to continuum transition states that the probability of finding the system in the continuum of final states increases linearly with interaction time. As you can see, I have this time T1. So, consequently, probability of finding the system in the initial state must decrease linearly with time from the value p1. So, we can we can consider that I had a population 1 uh, in the initial state and according to this equation that population initial state population should linearly decrease as a function of time. So, this is the population in the nth state, initial state, this is the time T1. As I increase the time of interaction, it will just linearly decay. Now, this linear decay law, which is derived from uh, Fermi's golden rule, suggests that extrapolation of a linear decay of probability of finding the system at the initial state. So, this is the probability of finding the initial state. Um, for a long time would result in a negative value. So, this value, this is a positive value and this is negative value. So, I will have, if I, if I wait for longer time, if I allow the system to interact more and more, so T1 time is 
increasing, there will be a time when popul uh, uh, population in that state is going to be negative or in other words um, probability of finding the system in the initial state is going to be negative and negative population is meaningless. This, this part, this, this, this is a consequence in this regime, there is a consequence we are getting in the negative population consequence, this is meaningless. This strange consequence clearly shows the failure of the Fermi's golden rule to determine the decay behavior of an excited quantum system due to non-radiative transition after a long time. So, what is going on? For after a long time, this equation fails to represent the real life problem because it is not possible the population if it is starting from 1, it can go to 0, it cannot be negative in this, in this state, negative population does not mean anything or negative probability of finding the particle in that state does not mean anything. It can be 0 which means that all the population has been transferred to the final state. There is no population anymore in this state. So, it can be 0 but less than 0 it is not possible. So, what is going on for a shorter time it is perfectly fine we can accept that but for longer time behavior of the system it is failing to it, it fails to represent the long time behavior of a uh, quantum decay dynamics. Uh, we know that from a very simple kinetic model if we consider uh, the simplest kinetics which can be uh, you one can imagine uh, for any chemical kinetics problem is that a system if it is starting from population 1 it decays exponentially that is that is something which we have experienced um, in real life and because it, ex it decays exponentially uh, there will be a time when the population will be 0 and that is exactly what we expect. If I start from an initial state n and if it is transferring the population to a very closely lying space um, um, uh, states, um, then there will be a time when for a long time there will be a uh, at a particular long time there will be a population where population is 0. So, it is starting from 1 and going to 0 population and that is somehow uh, depicted within this exponential decay, uh, decay law. So, so, an exponential decay law is well accepted law for any quantum decay, but Fermi's golden rule showing that it is going to be linear decay and that is why it fails to represent long term behavior of a quantum uh, dynamics or quantum decay dynamics. So, all we need to do is that we have to find out some rigorous treatment of uh, uh, so that we can get this um, exponential decay uh, from TDAC. In uh, having said that we can also note that for a long time uh, sorry for a short time this regime one can say that for a short time even an exponential decay can behave like a linear decay. So, Fermi's golden rule is actually representing this short time behavior of a real system. It is not representing the long term behavior of a quantum decay or quantum dissipative dynamics. So, for rigorous treatment of, uh, of the quantum dissipative dynamics or quantum decaying dynamics um, which will lead to state to continuum non-radiative transition we are actually working on this state to continuum non radiative transition uh, 
what we need to do is that uh, we have to express the total wave function in a following way. I have this initial state to be n and then we have continuum of final states m. So, at any instant of time during the interaction, the total wave function will be represented as linear combination of the initial state and all final states. When I say all final states, I am considering 0 to infinite states. All final states we are including. This kind of limit, uh, considering this kind of limit is very useful for uh, the mathematical derivation, but uh, in, in practical reality one can imagine that it is going to a very large number of states and when they are coupled we are considering this this coupled um, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the time dependent wave function which will be representing the system during the interaction time uh, is a coupling between the initial state and all continuum states. Here we note that the total wave function depends both on position space and time. We know that psi has to be dependent on position and time. However, here we are just showing psi t for notational simplicity. We just remove this x part. We know that it depends on x, but for the time being we will just remove this notation so that we can, we do not have many notations to write down. Simultaneously, but we, we remember that it, 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 it is having this x part also. The first term represents the initial state and the second, star, second term represents the continuum of the final states. So, if this is the wave function, instantaneous wave function during the interaction time, then we have to solve it, we, we, we have to get uh, the final expression for this or in other words we have to get the expression for C n and C m uh, from time dependent Sorringer equation and time dependent Sorringer equation we have to write down like this way equals H psi t. So, left hand side we have to take the derivative of the left hand side. So, we will consider the first time derivative first for this. So, if we take the time derivative of this equation, we get um, I h cut C n. So, this entire term will be there and as a result we can write down I h cut. We take the derivative. So, we have this d c n t d t e to the power minus i e n t by h cut n plus c n t minus i e n by h cut e to the power minus i E n t by h cut plus integration 0 to infinity d c n t d t e to the power minus i e m t by h cut m over d m plus 0 to infinity C m t minus i E m t by h cut e to the power minus i E m t by h cut m d m. So, this is the entire uh, time derivative one can explicitly do that and uh, finally what I get from this time derivative uh, if I simplify it then what I get here is that I h cut 
dcnt dt e to the power minus i ent by h cut n plus cnt en e to the power minus i ENT by H cut N plus I H cut 0 to infinity DT e to the power minus I EMT by H cut M DM plus 0 to infinity CMT EM e to the power minus I EMT by H cut M DM. One can explicitly do that and one can very easily get this the time derivative. So, left hand part is, is done we will use this time derivative. Uh, later first we will look at the, uh, the, the next part. So, this is the time derivative we have and uh, right hand side of the TDAC uh, if we look at this that is going to be uh, this one is the right hand side TDAC. So, here the unperturbed Hamiltonian gives the stationary state energy. So, we know that this unperturbed Hamiltonian gives the sta stationary state energy. Uh, all stationary state information before the uh, interaction process started uh, we get all the stationary state information from this unperturbed Hamiltonian and uh, from that only we get to know what are the states available and which states will be coupled to with each other for, for this population transfer. So, following um, uh, um, consequences we can write down immediately first of all for the initial state we said that initial state here uh, is going to the all final states. So, for initial state n we can write down H naught n is nothing but E n n that is coming directly from the time independence origin equation. For all final states one can write down H naught m this is a consequence of time independence Orringer equations m and we have said that e m is continuously varying because it is continuum and we are saying that this is not a discrete state anymore e m is continuously varying. So, e m continuously varying continuous. Uh, from 0 to infinity from 0 to infinity and because they are the Eigen states of the Hamiltonian H naught one can use the orthogonality relation for the Eigen states which is n n giving me 1 n m giving me 0 then m m dash giving me delta function of m minus m dash where it is going to be 0 if m not equals m dash and this is this is this is m dash is it is so basically m and m dash m and m dash are two states in continuum. So, this is going to be 1 when you have m equals m dash. So, these are the orthogonality relations we have already. In addition to this we will assume few more uh, conditions which will help us reduce the equation very easily. We said that the Hamiltonian interaction Hamiltonian uh, H dash is actually responsible for the interaction. So, uh, this H dash is turned on 
at t equals 0 time and it is turned off at t equals t1 time. So, this is something which we again assume just like what we did in the uh, when we have used perturbation theory uh, to, to uh, formulate this Fermi's golden rule for this non radiative transition. So, TDAC when I when I am using TDAC, TDAC is actually giving me a function during this time interval when the interaction is going on and we need to find out then final state population for that. So, for the coupling particularly for this coupling part we will make assumptions following assumptions we will make for this coupling associated with this coupling part. The first assumption is that this coupling does not allow interaction between states of the continuum which means that m m dash is 0. It is not coupling between the states in the continuum where m and m dash are representing two states in the continuum any two states in the continuum. The coupling does not allow interaction of any state with itself that is also another uh, assumption we are making n all are 0 with th th this coupling is not um, coupling the states with itself both states n and m states with, with self they, they, they are not coupling each other they, they are not coupling the um, uh, the state with itself. C another condition we, we um, assume that for all states coupling is constant. We have 0 to infinite states m states for all states this part is constant. And finally, we will assume that at t equals 0, I had population in the initial state 1 and cm all population in the final state was 0. So, in the final state there was no population. So, this is another initial condition we have defined.